Uh, thank you very much for a uh, nice introduction. Uh, my name is Sato Nakazuji from University of Tokyo. <laughs> so I didn't know that uh, the audience is going to be so uh, wide range. So uh, this could be a little bit uh, expert oriented, but please ask questions. And uh, the, so, yes, I would like to thank uh, the Talab to the ICAM uh, for the support uh, for the long term stay in the event and, uh, in the United States, in particular. I'm staying at Johns Hopkins and uh, visiting the various places and enjoy uh, the uh, scientific and also uh, various the family stay here in the United State, uh, States. And so um, uh, I'm going to talk about this the, uh, the topology. Uh, this is a key phase in these uh, electric systems. Just a very short introduction. So uh, this here uh, in the condensed matter physics, uh, there's uh, a lot of highlight. Uh, is now uh, going on uh, in the uh, in terms of the topology, and uh, so just this is a very limited number of the examples. But that this history, I uh, said, this study has uh, traced its history maybe uh, back this uh, discovery, uh, experimental discovery, as quantum hole effect. And uh, this uh, the uh, this is the, um, the occurred in uh, 1980s, but uh, after uh, about. The quarter century later, that is in the uh, this uh, early uh, to the 21st century, the topological insulator has been discovered, uh, which actually uh, is, is insulator, but the surface is a metallic because of the uh, topology in the electric uh, structure. Uh, that is so. This is very uh, uh, breakthrough in the field. And another recent uh, discovery is the wild, wild fermion, or wild same metal, that is called, uh, so this, so wild is actually uh, the, the concept introduced from high energy. And uh, this uh, is actually uh, also excited us quite a lot. That I think the later talk today, I will be uh, discussing this indeed. Uh, in very, uh, so the very exciting talk will be here for the experimental discovery. And so, uh, so I'm going to talk about the uh, the electron system, which correlate a lot. That, that uh, it's, but uh, the correlation is really often introduced by the uh, Coulomb repulsion. And uh, however, these uh, materials so far discussed in this field is actually limited to uh, the not uncorrelated electrons. Uh, maybe uh, what what is most uh, really, uh, familiar is a silicon, for example, or this. What is written in uh, Kittel in solid state uh, physics, for example. But uh, as, as some of you know, uh, that the, uh, there is another stream that is very exciting, uh, strongly correlated electron systems. And this maybe the study traces its history back in the uh, what is called heavy film superconductivity or the, the high temperature superconductivity, which superconducts more than nitrogen uh, liquid temperature. Or maybe uh, technologically, some of uh, the, the important giant magnetic resistance has been discovered in these materials, and the multi ferroics which is ferromagnetic, and at the same time, it's a uh, ferroelectric system, has been very much exciting uh, subject. And these uh, correlated electron systems is so hard for us to understand it in the, uh, the basic mechanism, and uh, it's often actually quite like for experimentals because the, here the serendipity works quite well. And, uh, the, uh, and so I would say this is experimentally uh, uh, this, uh, the driven. And this is actually uh, topo to this, uh, the top concept of topology is quite uh, theoretical. And this uh, the, so basically this topological insulator wild seminar has been discovered first in theoretically and they are confronted experimentally. But having seen these two streams, it's very natural for us to imagine that the next stage should be uh, what is uh, uh, called maybe the strongly correlated topological phase. So the uh, so how what happens when we combine these two concepts all together? That's that's actually quite exciting. Next uh, stage, and uh, the, again the theorist plays a lot of role, like uh, P.S. Coleman. He's recently uh, introduced the concept, uh, this uh, the correlated version of topological insulator uh, called the uh, topological condo insulator, and uh, this wild wild fermions, uh, wild seminal has been uh, actually found in the theoretically in the, uh, the 
Elysium oxide, but it's also on other correlated systems. Another interesting topic uh, in terms of topology, I would say, is not limited to the conductors, but also the magnetic fissure here. There is a system that is called a spin liquid. Spin liquid is, so, as you know, in, the, in this, uh, this cup, the, everything freezes with you with, uh, the, when you cool down the, the, the temperature, like in uh, water to ice. But the sun, and, uh, so that the uh, sun liquid, like a heading four, doesn't uh, freeze because of quantum fluctuations. And uh, we're also very much excited when we find a magnet that actually who, whose spin doesn't freeze. And here, uh, this, the freezing actually is a kind of a translation of symmetry breaking in the uh, atomic, uh, the, the, in the sol for the solid. But the here spin is a time growth of symmetry breaking. And the, uh, so the order parameter is usually well defined. But the, for the liquid, I mean, the, you don't have any order parameter. So the, the concept of topology plays very much uh, important. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit uh, later, uh, taking one example. And another ex exciting, uh, uh, the, but stu uh, very uh, still uh, the uh, limited ex uh, understanding is made is uh, this metallic state, which is called a strange metal or quantum critical phase, which do not seem to actually uh, follow any uh, conventional theory. And uh, we believe this may actually have, uh, this maybe could, could be rescued by, by, the, uh, the, it, by introducing the idea of topology, but uh, this is not yet being well settled. Anyway, so I'm going to first, so this is a, the, uh, the overview. I'm going to first to talk about the, uh, I mean, one of the uh, spin liquid. And uh, it's actually, it's very interesting to introduce the excitation, the, the I mean, elementary, so the excitation, the, uh, the monopole. And then I'm going to talk about uh, this, uh, the, uh, the concept of the Hall effect. Actually, as I said, the quantum Hall effect was the first version of the topological uh, matter in quantum uh, systems. And uh, so I'm going to first say for the correlated electron system, anomalous Hall effect plays a very much, uh, important role. I'm going to, to talk two topics. Uh, one is uh, the, the chiral spin liquid actually shows Hall effect in the spin liquid phase, and then uh, we have recently found uh, the antiferromagnet could also be a anomalous Hall, uh, exhibit anomalous Hall effect. Okay, so this actually could be uh, uh, could be uh, useful for applications. So the monopole. Okay, so you maybe if you hear her, the uh, the her, uh, monopole, you would actually uh, remind of the, uh, the the conceptual elementary. Particle that's called uh, the monopole has, that's created supposedly in the uh, first period of uh, Big Bangs. It's a long time ago, but this, this has never been, uh, been uh, detected so far. Yet, the, in solid state, we have discovered some already, but this is uh, the, uh, not, it's not the uh, elementary particle at all, but a uh, case of particle, it's a mathematically equivalent uh, the particle realizing a solid state. The solid state is the spin ice. It's a classical spin liquid. I'm going to talk about why it's called classical. And uh, the, it's a, it's a, it doesn't have any magnetic order. That is why it's called liquid. And uh, then uh, it actually has uh, the topological excitation uh, as a monopole. Mon mon okay, so first version uh, is the, uh, the so the uh, called the dipora spin. It's, it's, it's with classical because so, so this is the uh, this uh, the uh, some of the pyrochlor oxide and this it actually contains uh, four f electron uh, uh, layers and the, this uh, this dysprosium and holomium has gigantic uh, moment as large as ten <coughs> this is almost the maximum of what you can get and because of this huge moment if you place this huge moment into the lattice they interact each other, uh, not through quantum mechanical uh, arts interaction, but actually classical dipolar interaction. Which, and uh, they, they actually, so uh, they, they emit magnetic field and they feel each other and actually follows uh, them through ferromagnetic uh, coupling. So they are actually uh, ferromagnetically coupled through them. 
And it turns out it actually forms uh, the, exactly the same structure as you have in water ice, but the, in terms of hydrogen. But the, it's called two in, two out state. So you have two spin in, two out, spin out. And uh, these, the, if you look at uh, this uh, each tetrahedron, it actually forms a small molecular filament. And that's who's uh, uh, the moment actually point to one zero zero uh, direction. So the so therefore, and the, this is a cubic material. So you have a six fold degeneracy. So this pheromone actually uh, can point to either of uh, equivalent one zero zero direction. So that's actually six fold. And then actually, this tetrahedron are loosely connected only through a point vertex. It's called uh, corner shelling. And this is called uh, eventually uh, this what is called a, a, a pyrogor lattice. And this pyrogor lattice is also the same as uh, the, uh, the ice structure in, uh, in the world, world ice. And the, uh, this, uh, so the, this uh, leads to a very strongly microscopic degeneracy. It's almost like a, the a one third of our two is in, uh, is entropy that is actually in this uh, one. Say. That actually can be uh, uh, dynamically you can measure its entropy associated with you know, this one third of our log two, nearly, it's not exact. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the, what, is, what is called monopole here is the, what can you, you can create the, what is called monopole. It's first you can create the, uh, the dipole, it's, you can create the one dipole, and they actually uh, can be uh, separated from each other without uh, making so much uh, cost I and mean, just a uh, small amount of energy. And they can freely uh, move uh, from each other, uh, separated from each other, and they can freely move. How, uh, so it's just technically it's called a deconfine. And uh, the it's dynamics is only diffuses. It's like a Brownian motion. It's a thermally excited motion. It's, because it actually follows classical, it's not classical mechanics, it's not mechanical. And uh, low temperature, uh, I mean, if you cool down your system, you, of course, obviously lose all the uh, the uh, monopole, which is a defect. So you can see this, uh, in order to create a monopole, you have to break this two into out state. And uh, this, uh, so therefore, the, the ground state is two into our state without any uh, monopole, so it's uh, what is called cooling phase. And the two into our state is actually, uh, so the can be a coarse ring into a divergent free condition. You don't have any source of the, uh, the flux in the uh, this in, in this inside of the tetrahedron. So that's, it can be a coarse ring into this uh, form, uh, this uh, divergence free condition. And if you, once you have this, but on the other hand, this this is only a, a, a met at locally, and they have a very uh, much uh, fluctuating and, or, or disorder inside the material. There's no longer major. There's no major. So therefore, if you actually do, uh, uh, if you actually do some calculation, the spin-spin correlation is very much disordered. They don't know how to orient each other almost. However, they have some uh, uh, correlation. The parallel correlation spin spin interaction. Yes. And uh, when you see, but although it is strongly disordered, it's not simply just flat scattering. For example, if you take uh, this neutron scattering experiment, there is a clear structure associated with it because of two into structure, what is called the pinch point singularity. It's about I like singularity at the high uh, the, uh, symmetry points, such as 200111. And this has been fully confirmed experimentally. Very beautiful um, agreement between the uh, simulation of theory and experiment. So the sum of the material like polymer titanate, which is classical uh, spin ice, has been identified as uh, indeed a spin ice having a uh, full on phase. However, as I said, because this material do not possess uh, any quantum mechanically, uh, or in, uh, uh, the uh, the created interaction. So this is totally frozen, like, uh, I mean, supposedly in that ice. So no quantum fluctuation at all. So it's not uh, liquid at the end, it's just a uh, spin that frozen. 
So how to introduce quantum fluctuation into this material? That's what I, I, we have been struggling so far. So obviously, you have to dis, I mean, the, uh, decrease the amount of your uh, dipole energy, right? So the, just let's decrease the uh, size of the moment. And the, another thing is that uh, actually in magnets, they actually, uh, the, the spins are connected through an electrical I mean, the interaction. Uh, the, I mean, the hybridization, what is called this? Hybridization. So they, which have to this, I mean, the, uh, enlarge the uh, the, the uh, hybridization of the hopping between the four uh, f electrons and two p uh, oxygen uh, electrons. <laughs> so uh, the that's that's the idea. So if we use the pressure dynamic, or we trip it, it turns out it actually enhances the uh, overlap between this oxygen two p and four f electrons. That actually enhances quantum trans uh, the quantum mechanical uh, interaction, super exchange interaction, and that automatically introduces the, uh, the, uh, this quantum fluctuation, what is called quantum transverse uh, uh, term. But you have to, you should not destroy your system uh, from the two into out uh, state. That is the idea. And uh, we recently found some of the materials, such as yttrium and terbium and prosodium. Uh, based uh, pile collides, it's called 227, it's oxide, uh, is one of the uh, such spin eyes. And I'm going to talk about this, uh, the compound which we have been uh, recently uh, working on. And the, this is the, um, so the, uh, the, so first thing we, we do, we do actually cool down this material whether they don't have any magnetic complementary order by measuring the specific heat susceptibility, etc. We have made such a study. And then we also did a, a neutron diffraction measurement and found there is no such long range order at all in this system. Indeed, there is no magnetic drop peak. That's a good thing. And the, uh, the, the, if you look at this, it's very broad the future. And, uh, the, and again, you see some about I like uh, the uh, singular behavior, uh, singular uh, structure around 200, which is fully consistent with the idea that the uh, material do have a Coulomb phase, namely two into our state uh, with uh, low temperatures. But this is elastic state. This actually is almost like a, this uh, the, uh, frozen state, but actually turns out it's only coming from the, uh, the, the five percent is coming from the total spectra of this from this uh, in the elastic channel. This means that uh, there is a very strong dynamic uh, uh, the. Uh, channel in this material, in, and indeed, uh, by using neutral diffraction measurement, we can actually change the, en uh, the energy. And namely, we can provide the system the energy by uh, it's what is called energy transfer from the neutron, and see what happens. And this is a result. So this actually at uh, the point to the AV, which is uh, so at 100 millikelvin. So this is about uh, 20 times the larger energy excitation of this material. So we can uh, visualize uh, the quantum fluctuation in momentum space, and that is actually like, look like this. So this is actually quite much, much brighter. So the, uh, this actually red is much, very brighter signal than this, uh, this, uh, this elastic channel. So this means that uh, if you actually provide a material energy into the material, that actually a lot of excitation happens inside the material. What, what kind of excitation? So the uh, turns out, if you look at this, uh, the, uh, the, the the high symmetry state, the portion uh, two zero zero, uh, this this bauta like uh, the uh, structure disappears. So this means that actually you create uh, the monopole, and uh, they do have some such uh, excitation inside the material as a quantum fluctuation. And actually, it turns out this is quite consistent with the recent series of development. And uh, the, this, the ground state is two into out. Two into out is actually frozen, just as an ice uh, state. And, uh, and the, the, so when you flip the spin, you cause some energy like two times J, and then you can create a monopole. But they are all completely diffuse. If it's all classical, you know, you just, they are all energy, they, they are actually uh, at the same energy. But if you introduce quantum fluctuation, it's like almost like giving a uh, dispersion relation for the electron. And so it's actually behave, it's actually start having uh, inertia. 
So the one pole can start uh, coherently propagate inside material. It's like an electron, electron in your uh, metallic system, having a, a small gap. And another exciting possibility is that uh, uh, the, if you actually uh, introduce quantum fluctuation, uh, like it, what we have in this uh, in the daytime, it's like create uh, this the photon. But it's a photon is a linearly dispersive mode, <coughs> and uh, without having any uh, symmetry breaking, because this is a liquid, so you don't have any symmetry breaking. So this is not a gold, uh, the goldstone mode. So this, uh, if we find such a uh, mode, this is almost very very exciting because it's a positive evidence of uh, the uh, quantum spin liquid or quantum spin ice. So this is kind of a, the holy grail in, in our field. And we're trying to find it. And by, first of all, you have to make your crystal very, very, very clean. And uh, you, don't, you cannot actually have any defect almost. But uh, it's a very hard uh, task for us. And we managed to create uh, such a thin crystal. I mean, the, the color green is one of the most important as aspects of this. Uh, but I wouldn't talk about the detail, it's going to take uh, one hour. <laughs> but anyway, we have recently made uh, such a green, uh, the nice single crystal. And then we made uh, the, the uh, managed to have a spin ice correlated, uh, this uh, fully spin ice correlated uh, region below around a few hundred billion. And suddenly we start seeing a very large increase of thermal conductivity. So, thermal conductivity is the property how the, 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 this material is actually. Properly, uh, uh, the, uh, allow the trans uh, the coherent propagation of heat. So there must be some a lot of fluctuation to assist the heat transport, right? The phonon does not actually exist at such a low temperature, 200 mil Kelvin and below, but some of the increases. So this, this means that uh, we have a strongly fluctuating two in two out state. It doesn't mean it's completely frozen. So this is quite uh, exciting uh, in, uh, the, uh, observation, and we uh, start, maybe there might be uh, some excitation which associated with this photon. And uh, the, I'm staying at the Johns Hopkins in order to actually uh, do uh, the neutron diffraction and uh, to confirm whether there is any linear dispersion by scattering measurement uh, using a nice thing crystal we have, been, we have obtained. Okay, this is the uh, first part of my talk. And then I just want to switch my gear and just in, uh, introduce another inter, uh, in the, uh, uh, example of topological matter in correlated electron system. <coughs> so here, I think it's quite now more uh, uh, familiar thing to all of you, I hope. So this, this guy, who is already quite old, uh, actually, when he was a student, whose name is Edwin Hall, uh, at Johns Hopkins University, when he was actually 22 or 23 years old. Uh, he was actually second in the United States who obtained a PhD. And, uh, at, at, and he obtained a PhD through the discovery of what is called now Hall effect. And, uh, sorry, I already told him. Okay, anyway. Uh, I'll try to go as long as I can. And, uh, <laughs> 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 As the, uh, so this is the, so you can see all the cities, <coughs> as you know, the, if, you, if you actually uh, apply minor fuel, there's uh, the ordinary hole effect, and also uh, you can actually obtain a uh, large mass hole effect uh, if you have, uh, it's, it's, it's fair amount. And, but, uh, so that means, so if your magnet do not actually have, uh, have any monetization at all, for example, power magnet, as I said, it's spin liquid. Or if your magnet is anti which cancels, whose uh, spins are fully canceled to each other. So then you, will, you should not be able to see any hole effect at all, right? So that's, that's this uh, empirical law, I mean, over 100 years, says. However, I mean, recently, such another interesting development that happens in our field. Namely, um, this Amar whole current is not simply coming from the magnetization, but what is called a very curvature in momentum space is a, it's a, can be viewed as a fictitious field. Uh, and uh, the um, and anomalous, so, the, so the, this is some uh, theoretical form, but anyway, the, the, what, is, what tells us is that 
anomalous hole connectivity. When you are primal at the uh, electron uh, electric field, you actually, your electron motion is uh, the, uh, actually under a fictitious field, and that this field generates hole connectivity. And the uh, the material plus has been limited to just ferromagnet because of the fact that this very fictitious field is often proportional to magnetization. But the recent theoretical proposal suggests actually it's not the case all the time. And uh, the, uh, the, so the, we, have, we can actually find uh, some spin liquid antiferromagnet which might actually exhibit uh, spontaneous amount of effect. And uh, that suggests that actually automatically is indicated. There is a such topologically non trivial phase. And uh, uh, to make uh, the uh, to make some uh, concrete example, I just introduced the recent uh, mechanism. Uh, the introduced uh, th by theorists, the skull spin kinetic mechanism. So if you have a uh, three spins uh, subtending uh, this, this, sorry, this is the so. So the so spin chirality is a solid angle subtended by three spins. And if, when your conduction can couple these, with these uh, spins, um, they actually feel what is called a fictitious field uh, based on the, the size of the spin chirality. That is what uh, this recent uh, theory uh, suggests. So if you follow this mechanism, if this is the case, Anchiferman anchi actually uh, is a better place to look for the anomalous hole effect. And uh, the, because I mean, the solid angle vanishes to zero for ferromagnet, but it be, can become large in anchiferman. And this, uh, the fictitious field can be as large as 1,000 tesla. Okay? So um, the, the theoretically, you can actually find even under zero magnetization <coughs> and zero field. There would be uh, the, the two interesting uh, matter, what is called Karan's ferromagnet, that which can exhibit a mass hole effect, or even Karan's spin liquid, which actually uh, can exhibit uh, the spontaneous hole. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about in <laughs> is the experimental <laughs> basis. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Okay, okay, so I think I st we studied five, five minutes later, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so that's, okay. I'll just uh, go to the uh, key discoveries, okay. So this, what I want to uh, claim here is that uh, we have recently discovered these two uh, examples of the, uh, uh, this uh, unusual, uh, the, uh, the conductor that exhibit a mass hole effect. Okay, so, and, um, so the obvious place to look for this system is actually uh, this what is called the geometrical frustrated lattice and bipolar lattice. What was Mark Manuel is called spin. I said that what uh, the where the spin ice was discovered. So it's based on the so the these are the, based on the triangles, right? And then we, I, we have uh, worked on two uh, systems: the bipolar lattice system and the carbon lattice system. So I uh, just go through the key discoveries, okay? Um, so the this this presidamine dates again is a sister compound of presidamine zebra, which I, I have discussed uh, just before as a spin ice. This is another spin ice. So this uh, so the presidamine actually is provide uh, the spin ice sector, but the emission provides actually conduction electrons, and we didn't find any of the order down to lowest temperature. There's a uh, small uh, anomaly due to minority uh, imperfection of this uh, BSP. So what we found recently, it's, uh, the, this is temperature dependence of their field hole connectivity. And uh, we found uh, this hole connectivity quite large under zero field and uh, almost zero magnetization or biasingly small magnetization. And indeed, we found such a, a, a spontaneous hole connectivity in the region where the quantum spin ice is formed. So there's some very unusual uh, state, actually, uh, the, namely this quantum uh, spin liquid state, exhibit, uh, may, I mean, induce uh, spontaneous hole uh, connectivity. And uh, if you look, if you measure hole connectivity as a function field, for example, this looks like this. This looks. So, it's all, so there is a clear hysteresis. This is what you expect for ferromagnet, by the way. And uh, this is the, the size of the whole activity as, uh, as so large that uh, 
is, the, is equivalent to the, the phenomenon which having the, the spontaneous moment of one mm. However, if you look at the magnetization as a field, so it's at two temperature, you don't see any hysteresis at all. It's because of it's parma. It's basically it's been liquid, so you don't see any almost uh, any uh, hysteresis. That's one uh, major discovery. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, I have to go to another uh, topic. Uh, sorry, I can't talk about the We would like to discuss your discovery. Yeah, okay, just to yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But I have to introduce some idea, otherwise the whole discussion can be made. <laughs> so, so, and uh, another thing. Okay, so another uh, important uh, example. We also found uh, the antimony can be also uh, the materials that exhibit animal soul activity. This is uh, the, uh, the, the another frustrating moments, uh, but actually do have a, the, uh, the magnetic load controller, namely anti and it poses the uh, carbonate type of uh, structure. It's a stacked carbonate. Uh, I would say yes, this is because this is a slight distortion in associated with it, but uh, the, it's actually handy traded in the order. And uh, the, there's a small camping. That is a very detail, but there is a small canteen which induces a magnetic moment of the order of 3 million UV that allows us to actually uh, control the spin axis like this. That is the key point of this. So, this is a magnet that actually shows a uh, weak ferro magnetism below 430 Kelvin, 430 Kelvin, 160 degrees Celsius. All right, so this is another major finding of us. So if you see such a small moment, this is basically anti ferromagnetic okay? So the spins are canceled at its moment with each other, right? So the total magnetization, as I said, is small counting just three million UV, one thousandth of the usual, what you found usually in thermal. So you wouldn't actually, according to your text in the high school or at the university level, I mean, you wouldn't expect any animal fault there. It should be as large, I mean, as simple as 0.01 microns. It's very hard to be measured. However, what we found is that uh, it's actually 300 times larger than that you would expect. That's very, very large, okay? So that means whole resistivity uh, is actually coming from another source. So it's obviously saying it's not due to external field, it's not due to the internal field due to the magnetization, but something called the fictitious field that, that which I introduced. Okay? So and also this material actually is a magnetic three tin. So, uh, uh, it's very low cost material and safe material and already uh, showing such a huge effect of room temperature and a very easy material. And uh, I would say this is, could be very good for your high school or university, university science uh, experiment. And also, uh, the, uh, this large hole effect is already comparable to ferromagnet, or some, uh, much larger than some, some, some ferromagnet conductors. And because anomalous hole effect is technically equivalent to a spin hole effect, so now uh, in the field of spintronics, uh, there's a search for a good spin current uh, source. And this may be a very such a law. OK, now it seems that I have to stop. So I just uh, leave this uh, thing. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. So you know that uh, the detail, but okay, that means uh, I can uh, technically answer <laughs> more detail. Uh, uh, this so in this system it doesn't actually compact. So the the, the size of the atmospheric uh, conductivity is quite large. Uh, so it's quite large. Uh, I would go to the some other. Okay, here is so the. If it quantized, it should be something like thousands of the thousand ohm centimeter inverse. 
Indeed, it's almost approaching. And uh, this man is 18, and then Mr. Jin, he, uh, this is there's several temperatures. By the way, this is whole productivity versus monetization. As I said, the, the whole productivity of animals is usually proportional to monetization. And this also is luckily so for uh, including various kinds of materials. But uh, the, this material actually uh, off from the scaling because it's, it exhibit uh, such a large animal's hope effect in comparison with its own associated monetization. And uh, okay, so the, it's, uh, it's actually temperature dependent, but it, that, it reaches um, almost 50% of uh, the conversion. Can you go back to the uh, previous first example where you showed the, uh, in the last slide you showed the last uh, uh, comparison of this one? No, no, no. The pre uh, proscenium. A proscenium, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay. So you have this uh, zero field magnetization kicking in uniform magnetization. Uh -huh. Where is this coming from? Oh, that field magnetization. This, uh, if we make your, if you make your magnet perfect, um, yeah. So this is uh, this very tiny. Uh, <coughs> uh, so this is field cooled and there are fields of stability. And uh, we believe this coming from the imperfection of the, the, this uh, particle B. That is, uh, I mean, the, some of the four F spin do not actually cannot find a, a, the uh, neighborhood. Therefore, it's kind of left and uh, alone uh, could not form two into a state, and that may induce this type of uh, small hysteresis. And that also shows up uh, <coughs> as a small a residual moment. But this moment size is very tiny, 0.01 UV is coming from something like uh, one percent or less uh, size of the uh, yeah. Time for one last question. Maybe I can ask. Uh, so tomorrow, what, what kinds of technological applications do you imagine that manganese three tin might be useful? Okay, thank you very much for that question. <laughs> Allow me to go to some of the slides. Let me check my flow. Uh, the, uh, I would say there's a lot of the applications, uh, uh, potential uh, applications. And, uh, just one message I would like to make here is that uh, these magnets actually do not have any manipulation. And uh, so therefore, uh, this thing... So the one message I would like to make here is that uh, now, I mean, mechanism also is not yet uh, well understood. And uh, one of the source, uh, so one of the possible uh, mechanisms is what is called wild mammals, which I think is going to be a topic in the, in the afternoon uh, session. But uh, this, so therefore, it's very ongoing uh, the subject in our field. But uh, the, um, and but we obviously uh, see very large animals whole connectivity in without any magnetization. That indicates that we have. Uh, very culture or fictitious field in the system of the order of a few hundred Tesla. <coughs> and we can actually control this field by changing uh, this uh, mon uh, the magnetization orientation by using a few uh, very tiny uh, magnetic field of, of order of 100 hertz. And this actually is quite useful, and, uh, and, the, and obviously uh, this. Uh, can be used, uh, for example, oh sorry, uh, the, this is not, uh, okay, uh, this one, uh, um, and the M run, for example. Um, uh, the, so this is, uh, the, yeah, this is no work in memory. And usually, uh, this magnetic run is based on uh, the thermal layers. That uh, so they, which actually emits the stray field. So 
as you notice, uh, that when these uh, parallel to each other, it has a low resistance state, and they, when they, they are uh, the uh, anti-parallel, they actually have a high resistance state. But uh, this actually has a several program. Well, for example, it's actually a multi-layer structure. It actually costs it. Uh, it costs a lot to fabricate this uh, complicated uh, layer structure. And another important uh, thing, uh, the obstacle is that uh, it emits stray filter. So when you make this, they start talking to each other. And they actually uh, leading to the loss of the neighboring cell's memory. So you cannot densely integrate this into your uh, CPU. So how to solve it? One of the solution be using a Morse hole uh, sensor, uh, what, as what we have, uh, based on unshared magnet. Then you can actually make it this in a simple uh, one, single layer one. So it's actually quite easier for us to fabricate. And also because it's unshared magnet, it doesn't actually emit any uh, stray fields. So therefore, they, uh, you can actually uh, integrate uh, your uh, the uh, memory cell into much denser uh, state. I mean, uh, without having any problem. That's that's one possibility. Yeah. Thank you. Now, traditionally, STM uh, 
you know, the first thing you do when you do a scanning tally hyperscope uh, measurement is you measure, measure something called density of states, which is proportional to the differential conductance di dv. As it turns out, if you take another derivative, that is look at d squared i dv squared, you can actually get information on certain phonon or bosonic modes that couple to electrons. So for example, this is a very famous example of electron, uh, maybe phonon coupling in the high temperature superconductor visco. And here you can see this is a, these are spectra and you can see these tiny wiggles here outside the superconducting gap and these wiggles tell you about electron boson coupling. Uh, this is a very similar study. This was done by S on electron doped superconductors. And here these wiggles actually we believe represent the coupling between electrons and spin excitations. But you can look at these spectra, you can get some idea of the energy of the modes involved, but you can't actually get quantitative information from about alpha squared f unless you know a lot about the superconductor and we don't know enough about the microscopic, uh, 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 if we don't have enough microscopic information on this superconductor to actually extract alpha squared f just by looking at this di. Uh, the IDB spectrum. So is there a different way? And of course there is another way. Traditionally, we know that when you have electron phonon coupling, it affects the dispersion, meaning it affects the relationship between energy and momentum. So that's been seen, uh, so here's a cartoon of this. So here's energy along this axis, momentum along this axis. If you have electron phonon coupling or electron boson coupling, uh, then you have a small kink right at the Fermi energy, which you can measure by different techniques. Traditionally, it's being measured by a technique called angle resolved photoemission spectroscopy. And here you see energy and momentum, and here you see kinks in the spectra, and these spectra have been uh, attributed to interaction effects. Okay? So, of course, you see beautiful kinks by ARPES. So, the question, of course, is why do STM? And today I'd like to show you that using STM, you can not only see these kinks, but you can also invert these kinks to get alpha squared f, which provides a huge amount of information on electron phonon coupling. So the two ways we can get dispersion from, from scanning tunneling microscopy are quasiparticle interference and lidar level spectroscopy. So quasiparticle, let me just go with the first technique first. This is a very powerful probe. Um, it, you, you know, electrons are waves quantum mechanically. Normally, in, in most materials, you have different kinds of scatterers of these electronic waves. So if you have some kind of a scatterer, you have incoming waves, and then you have outgoing waves. These two waves interfere with one another, and you get an interference pattern. And by looking at this interference pattern, we can actually get information about this uh, uh, momentum k, right? And so that's what we do in STM. We can actually measure the momentum by looking at the interference pattern. And we know the energy because we control it. And because we know it at the energy and the momentum, we can plot the dispersion. OK, so here's a very uh, simple example of copper. Copper is a metal. On the surface of copper, you have a two-dimensional electron gas, and these dots represent impurities, and the circles around each impurity is the scattering of the electronic waves from these impurities, creating this interference pattern. And if you take a Fourier transform, you get this beautiful circle whose uh, radius represents the momentum. Okay? So now uh, you can do this as a function of energy, and usually this doesn't play. Let me see if it plays today. <laughs> no, as suspected. Okay, let's say we can do this. We can take this, do this as a function of energy, and you would see the circle diameter changing as a function of energy. You plot that energy versus momentum, and here is E versus K, dispersion in copper. It looks like a beautiful parabola. Okay, now we can do this. Uh, I'm pretty. Uh, we can do it with high resolution to get information on electron phonon coupling. But before I go into it, let me just tell you what you should expect for copper. So here's a calculation. It's a very simple calculation. 
uh, let's actually figure out what the electron phonon coupling should do for copper. Uh, sorry about this. It's, it's, but I, I, if you rack your brains, you might remember uh, the, a little bit of the physics that you learned. Uh, uh, so here's, you know, in, 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 in what we do, we, we measure density of states. ARPAS also measures the spectral function. And that's represented by the Green's function. So this it's the imaginary part of the Green's function that we care about. What I want to show you is that a normal Green's function is written like this uh, in the presence of interactions. So usually, if you didn't have any interactions, you would have just these two terms. But in the, all the interactions in your system can be <coughs> captured by a very simple term called the self-energy. Um, and it is the self-energy that we can actually measure with STM. Notice that the imaginary part of the Green's function, you have E minus EK, and this, you have this real part of the self-energy that shifts these energies. So if you knew what the dispersion should be in the absence of interactions, and you could figure out how much it had shifted, you would immediately be able to get the real part of the self-energy. So here's just a model calculation, you know, Take some random alpha squared f as a function, here's energy, here's alpha squared f, and you plug it into some calculation, and you can get 